Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and today we're going to be looking at a new game that's come out on the eShop. Uh, it kind of dropped a little bit out of nowhere, but uh, it's here now, which is a good thing, and that's Talisman, the digital edition. Now, this is a digital conversion of the original board game, which I think is now in its fourth edition. Uh, it was originally released way back in the early 80s, I think 83, 84, something like that. Uh, it's a very, very popular board game. And uh, it's one of those games that gets so popular it kind of divides the uh, the board game fans. You either sort of love it or hate it. But um, yeah, from what I've played so far, I've um, been really impressed with, with how they've converted it digitally. Um, just before we start, I just want to give you a quick overview. This is from Nomad Games. And at the current, the, the base edition, which we'll talk about in a second why it's the base edition. But the base edition will cost $17.99 in the UK and costs $19.99 in the US. Now, if we go to the collection, you can see here, included in the base game, you get the base pack here, which includes 14 characters, uh, 106 adventure cards, 24 spell cards, 28 purchase cards, four talisman cards. You also get bundled in um, some expansions, which is the city expansion. If we go across here, you can see that that adds in um, some new characters, six new characters, and um, some new cards. City cards, poster cards, and stable cards. A lot of new content there with that uh, expansion. We've got the Frost March expansion. Four characters and another 84 adventure cards, more spell cards, and some quests and alternate endings, including a different final boss in the game. Uh, we've also got the Sacred Pool, which is another four characters, 72 more adventure cards. And then we've also got some characters bundled into the base game as well, which is the Ninja the Pirate and the Witch Doctor, and they all have different stats and abilities. So that's, I mean, for $17.99, you're getting a lot of content now. It's at 14 characters, uh, was that another six, that's 20, 24, 28, plus these three characters, so 31 characters, and uh, no end of an extra adventure cards and stuff. So it's really good, but there is these expansion bundles, these DLC bundles. Now what we'll do is we'll have a look on the eShop quickly. And just to give you an idea of the pricing, it's pretty eye-watering, so um, be prepared. But these are the packs that are on the eShop. Um, again, these are like new quests, new characters. Let's just tot up the individual amount. So if you buy these packs individually, you're looking at £81.20. And I believe, if I can remember off the top of my head, I think it's $90, which uh, that conversion seems to work out about right. I've actually got um, some information uh, with the game as well. Um, we've got some pricing information that sort of explains some of these DLC packs. And just to let you know, there is an upgrade bundle that's coming. I believe it's coming next week. So if you do want to buy the whole lot, then um, obviously here you're looking at paying sort of £18 for the base game, £81 for all the DLC. But you can buy the what they're calling the ultimate upgrade bundle, which is all of this content. Uh, I believe it doesn't include the base game, but I'll have to double check that. But anyway, the ultimate upgrade bundle is £53.99 and $65.99. I believe, as I say, I believe that's on top of the base bundle. So you buy the base bundle and then the ultimate upgrade bundle for £53. He's saving about, about 25, 30 quid there. Uh, so if, you, if you're big into uh, Talisman, it's probably worth doing a nice little saving to get all the content. So... Let's have a look at the game. We're going to play a little bit and then I'll give you my verdict um, towards the end. I've played a good few hours of this now over the last few days. Uh, the game does come with online play. And the good thing about, well, I said the good, the great thing about this online play system is that you can quit at any time. Uh, so if you've got a party of friends, if there's four of you playing, you know, you've had like half an hour, you need to go do something else. You can all quit and then all come back and carry on the online game at a later date. How cool is that? There's not many games that allow you to carry on an online save game. I thought that was absolutely excellent. Um, there is cross-platform online play as well. This game is also out on iOS, Android, I believe, uh, definitely on PC, on PlayStation 4, although that was made by a different developer, so I'm not 100% sure if that counts with the online player, especially with how finicky Sony are with their online systems. But yeah, online play. Um, the DLC doesn't um, travel across platforms though, so if you already own Talisman on another platform and have ploughed some money into the DLC, um, you will have to rebuy it in this version. So, we're going to start a new game. We've got these characters here, remember those DLC characters? 
Um, we can get a better view here of all the characters you can eventually unlock in the game. It's absolutely tons. Absolutely tons, isn't it? Um, these are the ones you get in the base game. Um, you get the base characters here. Minstrel, Monk, Priest, Prophetess, Sorceress, Thief. They've all got their own abilities. Um, and these are the base ones here that we start with. Wizard, Warrior, Troll. And who was the other one? The Druid, I think it was. So, loads of characters. We'll stick with the base characters. And we'll just... Uh, I think, don't think there's anything else we need to change. We've got these expansions here. You can turn off the expansions that you want to use, which is really good. And then the last really cool thing is here. This is... Uh, the house rules section which is really good again if you're an experienced talisman player and haven't played the digital version then you're gonna be really chuffed with this the ability to add in your own house rules so if you play the game you know the actual board game with your mates and you have specific rules that you like you probably be able to turn them on and off here. So a lot of the common house rules are available to you to toggle here as well so really well thought out let's go to start game and get into this one now, one thing I really like about the the system as well is you've got a tutorial that walks you through a lot of it all the time. Um, but the controls, after about five minutes of just trying to figure the controls out, I was absolutely well away. They've thought really hard about how to do the controls. And one of my favorite things is they've mapped on the right stick four directions that allow you to reach the four main areas of the board. So you've got left. If you press left on the right stick, you move over to the um, player area on the left here so you can view player information stats about your character um, any treasure that you get um, any items you get are all there easy to access press down on the right stick you come down to this information panel at the bottom we can get information about the square that you're on and any other information about the cards that are there and uh, the end game really cool press up on the right stick takes you to the board let you move around the spaces and have a look at the board and then right on the right stick takes you over to this right hand side so you can roll your dice and do the different actions that pop up there uh, ZR will zoom you into the board, which is really cool to get a closer look of what's going on on the board, which is really nice. See these really nice sort of hand-painted style characters, and ZL will zoom you back out. So what is Talisman? Okay, Talisman is a board game. You move around the board. Um, you see the board there. You've got like an outside area. You see that there, separated by the sort of uh, river. Now you move around that board. You roll the dice, and you move that number of spaces. You can move in either direction, left or right. Um, so it does give you some um, choices to make. It's not just rolling and following a set direction like something like Monopoly. You do get a choice of which direction to move in. And then each square you land on will have a different experience. You'll either draw a quest card or there'll be a monster there to fight or um, an activity to overcome. Or even if there's another character, one of the other characters here um, on that space, you can battle them and either take sort of energy or life away from them or steal their items. So there's lots to do, but the idea of the game is to get to the middle section of the board that you see that sort of a hellish deserty color colored orange in the middle. You get to a tower in the middle section now and uh, whoever gets there can start to take out the other players and face the final boss. But it's really good. I like the way that you have to sort of travel around the outside of the board and build your character up sort of RPG style. So increasing your stats, um, finding items, getting weapons and armor, getting followers that help you. Um, and then when you're strong enough, you fight a character. If I come down and move the cursor to the bottom here, you've got the Sentinel. Now, there is one way to cross the river if you can build a raft. But other than that, you've got to fight this Sentinel um, character to be able to cross the river here and then get into this second section, uh, which is slightly more trickier with harder sort of um, encounters. And then eventually you will make your way into this middle section and say get to the crown of command there in the middle to win the game. Games are quite long. A, a real game of uh, Talisman can take sort of around three to four hours depending on how many players you've got playing. This digital version drastically reduces that down to around about an hour, but anywhere between one and two hours. But I've, I've, games I've played so far have been well under an hour and a half. And that is thanks to another good uh, addition in the game and that's that you can set your speed of the AI. If we go into the options here, you've got quite a lot of options under the more options section. And you can see here you can speed up the AI, you can speed up the UI, so how quickly dice rolls and the characters move and stuff. Uh, and you've got all lots of different options here that are really cool that will help you. One of the best options that I liked is when I first started playing the game, I was really squinting at the telly. I couldn't really see the text very well went into the options and I've actually got a text size 
option, which was absolutely brilliant. And uh, after I put that to large, had absolutely no problems at all. So really well thought out um, sort of systems in the game. They've done a really good job. Let's play a few rounds and just show you how it plays. So we're gonna start off and roll the dice. And we roll a five and you can see it's highlighted the spaces we can move to here. We can even move over here to the fields where we will draw one card. And uh, you can leave cards behind. You can actually drop cards as well, sort of drop equipment. So it says there, draw one card, but do not draw a card if there is already one in this space, which there obviously isn't at the moment. Or we can come down here where there's also some fields and we can draw a card. So we've got a choice of which direction to go. We'll come down here. Move our character down here. And then we draw an adventure card. And this is a blizzard. So it tells you at the bottom what it is. Uh, it says winter has come with a vengeance and a blizzard envelopes the, envelopes, envelopes the land. For two rounds, all characters, no matter what region they are in, may only move one space per turn. The blizzard then abates to the discard pile. So if I draw that card in a real game, I'm not going to be popular with my uh, fellow players because it means they can all only move one space now. So the AI is taking their turn. And uh, as I say, you can speed this up. Or if you want to, you can slow it down if you want to know what they're doing. But what we're going to do is we're going to speed it up by pressing X. And then you can go to skip to next human player. And you can see it whizzes through the turns. I only get to move one space, so I don't get to roll a dice. So I can move here into the forest. And this is uh, like an adventure square. So you roll a die once you move here. And you can see at the bottom there, if I roll a one, I get attacked by a brigand with strength four. If I roll a two or three, I get lost and I lose the next turn. So I'm lost in the forest. If I roll a four or a five, I'm safe. Or if I roll a six, a ranger guides me out of the forest and I gain one craft. Now let's talk about your stats. If you come over to the right hand panel here and look at the stats, you've got uh, five stats at the bottom there. You've got strength, which is uh, what you use when you fight characters, or you can use craft, the blue stat at the bottom there, what I've got currently got two of, and that's more like a magic type attack. And it's kind of makes sense as a warrior. I'm stronger than, uh, I've got more strength than I have magic power, which is uh, pretty obvious. And obviously if you're a wizard, you probably have more craft than you've got strength. You've got your life. So I've got five life at the moment. If I lose all my life, then um, I'm removed from the game. And then you've got fate, uh, which plays its hand in some of the adventure cards and gold, which you can use to buy things with. So with my one move, I am going to decide between going into the forest and risking a dice roll. We can come here to the village. If we look at the village at the bottom, again, it's a dice roll. So we can visit the mystic and roll a dice. If we roll a one, we become evil. If we roll two or three, we get ignored. If we roll four, we become good. And if we gain five, we gain one craft. Six, we gain one spell. Or we can visit the blacksmith and buy an item. So I think we're going to go to the uh, village and take that encounter. So we don't really want to go to the mystic. We want to go to the shop, really. Oh, I think maybe because we can't afford anything, we're not getting the option to go to the shop. So we could visit the Mystic. Let's visit the Mystic and see where the uh, the dice roll takes us. So we've got a four. So we've become good. Now this is uh, a good chance to explain this. If you look at the characters on the uh, left-hand side again, let's see if I can bring up my character. Uh, you can see there in the middle, it says alignment neutral. Now this is really important. You can also see on the character stats on the left hand side, you've got a little um, little design next to you that's green at the moment. I'm sort of highlighting it with my cursor here. Uh, if it's green, it means you've sort of a, got a good temperament. If you're red, you've got an evil temperament. So you can see the wizard here is evil. Um, and then there's like a gray one for like a neutral temperament. So we rolled a four, we're gonna become good. And we're going to end our turn. And it's the AI's turn. And if we skip to the next player. So the wizard has moved on to our space, which means we get to battle. And so another good chance to show you this. Um, you see he's rolled a five and then added to his craft score because the wizard will fight in craft and not in strength. Uh, so he's rolled a five and he's already got a base stat in craft of five. So those two numbers added together gives him an attack score of 10 we've only got a two craft because we're not a we're not a magic person we're a fighter so we're going to roll the dice and we can't win this because um 
we can't get to 10, so our craft is only 5, which means the wizard wins that battle. We can re-roll, but we're really, we're not going to get to 10. So we'll just accept that. And the wizard took our bag of gold, so you can see the stat on the left-hand side on our little character icon there. We've lost our gold. We've got zero gold. Back to our turn, so we've, we can move one space while the blizzard still exists. We can see it still exists because down in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got the blizzard card. So we can move to the fields and draw an adventure card, and that's the only option we've got. No matter which direction we go, we're going to be heading to the fields. So we'll carry on moving around in this direction and take an encounter, which is the draw an adventure card. Oh, and we found our bag of gold. So uh, we'll take that and immediately get one gold. So maybe the wizard robbed us and uh, dropped the gold on his way out of the battle. So it's the AI turn and we're going to just skip ahead. So the troll has moved into our space and he's fighting us with strength. Now he has got a strength of six. He's also got a modifier of one, which may mean he's using a weapon and he's rolled a five, which gives him an overall score of 12. Now the each character has their own ability and the ability of the warrior is when we are in a strength battle, so when we're rolling for strength, we get to roll two dice because we're a warrior and we you know, get um, extra strength ability. Doesn't mean we use both of those numbers, we get to pick the highest number. So we roll a six and a four, we take the six, and it still wasn't enough to beat the troll. We only got a score of 10, and which was that six we rolled, plus our strength of four, gives us an overall score of 10. And so the troll rolled a 12. And the bag of gold we just found has been stolen by the troll. So not doing, we're not having much luck with our battles here. So the druid moves. Let's skip ahead to our turn. Just do a few more turns and then um, I'll sort of give you my thoughts of what I've played over the last couple of days. We get to actually roll the dice this time because the blizzard's abated. And we roll a three. So we can move to the sentinel. And uh, he's a very, very uh, tough fight to win. He's got a strength of nine. Um, so you basically, you don't want to take that fight on until you're leveled up a bit. We can move back to the forest. So our choices aren't great. We, we have to go and face the sentinel. Or we go back to the forest and take our chances on a dice roll. So I think we'll do that. We could re-roll our dice, actually. But um, never mind. So we rolled a one. And that means we get attacked by a brigand with strength four. So we've got a strength four as well. So we've got a good chance of winning this fight, especially with our two die rolls. But yeah, and we've rolled a six, which gives us an overall score of ten. He rolled a four, which gives him an overall strength of eight. Which means we win that battle. Hopefully we win a bit of bounty or something. I don't think we do, do we? No, we're not going to win anything. So let's skip ahead. We'll do one more roll and then we'll have a quick look at how the stats are sitting just to give you an idea because we are skipping ahead these turns and just to show you the AI are doing stuff. So we've rolled a two. We can move up here where this is to the ruins and here we can draw two cards and it says if there are any cards on this space draw only enough to take the total to two cards. Or we can go back to the village which is no point doing that because we've got no money. Um, if we click on the ruins square, you can see we've got a new pop-up on the right-hand side that says show cards. If we press that, you can see which cards are already sitting on that space. So it says a healer, there's a healer there, the healer card. And it says a healer has made his home here for the rest of the game. He will heal up to two lives per visit for any character landing here free of charge. So that's a really useful place to go to um, if you're struggling and losing health. We've actually still got five health but we will travel there anyway and we'll draw another card and it's an ogre so it's an enemy monster with a strength of five and he will remain there until someone beats him so we're going to roll our two die again and we get a six again which is good gives us a ten so anything under a five for the ogre we will win we roll a three which gives him a total of eight and uh, we win the battle. So what happens when you win a battle? We'll just have a look at that because um, it popped up there with some information. 
we go across to our character panel, you can see we've actually collected the ogre now as a trophy. And you can actually trade these trophies in later on uh, in the game to uh, to get, I think it's gold, I think you get. It's either gold or strength. Um, but yeah, you can trade those in. So it's worth beating these monsters and then you get sort of a handful of the, the sort of monsters that you've beaten and you can use them later on to upgrade. While we're here, we'll have a quick look at how the other characters are doing. You see the troll here has, uh, has gained a sword. He must have found that or bought it. So it adds one to his strength during battles. Uh, the druid has got uh, a spell card. I don't think we can see what it is because we haven't got enough craft. So that's cool. Uh, the wizard has got two spell cards and he's also got a follower. Uh, followers give you different benefits. Um, so they're really worth getting. Some can have a negative effect, but generally they'll give you a positive effect. And you can see that at the bottom it says you may exchange the prince for free gold at the castle. If you do, you place him in the discard pile. So it's almost like you're escorting him back to the castle. So there, you see the AI are taking their turns. Probably a little bit behind in this game um, from what sort of the, uh, the stats and items that we've got. We've had a few bad rolls and a few bad encounters, but uh, you know, the game of uh, Talisman is long and uh, you've got a good chance to upgrade your stats as you go on. But hopefully that's giving you a little bit of a flavour of how the game plays. Um, just on my thoughts on this, I really, really like Talisman. I mean, I'm a big board game fan anyway. Um, and even I had a good few years of collecting lots of different board games. I never got to play Talisman. So this is kind of my first experience playing it. Uh, I just think it's a really awesome game. If you like sort of fantasy RPG games, like Dungeons and Dragons, kind of that kind of feel, then I think you'd really like this. It's got some really cool systems. Some people will complain about the dice mechanic, like a lot of it's down to luck, but I think some of that's mitigated in the fact that you do get to make choices in either what direction you take, um, which cards you activate. Uh, as I say, as you go on later in the game, you get to choose which cards you drop because you can only carry so much equipment. So you get a sort of strategic choice there. So there are quite a lot of strategic choices that you get to make. So yeah, I really like it. Um, there's so much content, as I showed you at the start. Even if you don't want to spend out for the DLC, you've got no end of characters that you can mix and match with and play with. You've got the online mode as well, if you've got some mates that you want to play, or you can just play anybody online. And as, as I say, it's cross-platform. And Talisman is such a popular game that it's always going to be well populated. So really, really pleased with this one. I think if you're a board game fan, I'd absolutely recommend it. If you're a turn-based strategy fan or just like fantasy games, as I say, definitely recommend it. It really is well done. I'm going to be giving um, Talisman an 8 out of 10 on the Nintendo Switch. A really, really good board game. Uh, hope to see more of these sort of games from Nomad Games. They seem to have a real good handle on how to make a decent digital conversion. So well done, you guys. Um, thanks for watching the review. Hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give me a thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe if you're new here. Welcome to... Uh, to one and all if you're new and uh, all that's left is for me to bid you farewell and see you on the next video cheers everyone bye bye